Hey guys, I wanted to show you my 3D scanner. So in the past video I showed you my 3D printer. That's my 3D printer is currently printing something. But I wanted to show you really the part that I'm more excited. This is the most expensive part as well. And this is the Creality Wizard. Normally you can watch YouTube videos that show the unboxings and stuff. I'm not really going to do that. I'm just going to show you what comes in the box. So there's a couple of things that I really have complaints about with this 3D scanner. First of all, I'm actually very pleased and surprised that it does so well for what it is. But this is the cable. And right off the bat, it's a humongous cable and you kind of do need it for scanning various things. But in the future, I can totally see these 3D scanners be, because, being wireless because the wire gets in the way of the actual scanning. But it's a really large wire with these kind of bullet connectors and then it branches off from like a USB to the power one. It's very odd, but it works. And the case is pretty nice. Some people really are into cases, but the one thing I do is as soon as it's over for me, like I open it up, I never use the case ever again. Over here you have like the manual and you have a couple other things like um, <clears throat> here's the, a USB stick, the Creality USB stick. This has the software for the, the printer and so you can scan stuff. But you can always scan things by downloading the software online so it's not really needed and here's the manual here's some other garbage these are like little skins for the 3d printer and it comes with two here's the manual so open this thing up here's something this is i guess the deluxe version or something and it comes with this this is a electric turntable and it's got like a bunch of letters and stuff so you plug it into a USB on your computer or port and it rotates slowly so if you have a small object you can just put it here and it'll scan it uh, for you and that's ideal I believe you need to have the scanner six inches six to seven inches away from this looking at an angle so it's good to have but the scanners that I made I have not used it. I think it's um, infinitely better to just kind of hold it. Now this is the scanner. I have this skin on it and it's very simple. I guess it uses LiDAR. It's got three lenses here in the front, some lights. Here's the Creality Lizard and at the bottom you have a tripod mount and that's pretty much it with the exception of course with the connector. I already have a complaint about this connector. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this connector is a pain in the ass to use. I kind of wish it was a simple USB sort of the connector, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. So that's the scanner. And another thing that it comes with is this. This is a tripod mount and you can kind of rotate it. It's very cheaply made, but it does function pretty well. So you can put it on the table and scan stuff. And also it telescopes. I, I kind of use it this way. So the way it works, you just kind of do this and that's pretty much it. So usually like I scan things this way and just kind of move around. So we are going to be doing a quick test with this 3D scanner. So another note is that you need a PC and not just a PC, you need a PC with an Intel processor. If you have a Ryzen processor, the software does not work. And here's the major con of this. This works well, it's overly expensive for what it is, but the software really is the limiting factor. They did not spend a lot of time on the software, the usability, the interface, it's buggy, and I have a lot of issues with the software. But I am going to show you really quick how to use it. We're going to do a scan. This is the scan we're going to do. This is my Mars Attack Relief. And just so you guys know, it's best to have an object like this. A white object. 
it's going to pick up the values much better than on something like this. So sometimes one of the tips that you can use with a 3D scanner is simply to paint this in white. There is this white disappearing sort of chalk paint that you can buy that will work, but this should work fine for our process. And then I'll probably scan this in comparison. One tip that I learned is that you want to have a dark background and that's going to help the scanning much more. I have my laptop and we're going to get the 3D printer or the 3D scanner. Here's the 3D scanner and we have our really long annoying cable but it does work and I'm not going to use the turntable for this onto the USB. This is a very uh, weak laptop and I would like a better one because this 3D stuff takes a lot of processing power. Plug it into here and I hate these bullet type connectors. You have to kind of like search for which way it is and there we go. Now here's another thing you might not be able to hear. Let me put it up to the microphone. The, la the fan on here is extremely loud and one of the cons as well is that there should be like an on off switch so you can like turn it off when you're not using it because I just keep things like plugged into the computer as a kind of workstation. So I have this turned on and we're ready to start the scan. We'll open up CR Studio, Creality Studio Lite, loading up. And then it asks you table or hand scan. Table, you need to use that little turntable. I'm going to use the hand scan. And this is what it looks like. It is a horrible piece of software. I just want to take you guys along the screen really quickly. Because this is not very intuitive. You know, I have been a designer for many years. So when I look at this, I just look at it in a huge mess. But now because I have worked on it a little bit, I kind of know what I'm doing, but if you ever want to switch to table mode, you just kind of click on this, not even on the image, so that's really bad. You have to click on this like little tiny image, and now it's on uh, table mode. But you want to keep it on geometry and not texture because we're going to be 3D printing stuff, so we want it to be able to capture the geometry as opposed to any color. Frame rate, low or high, I find that in this old computer, uh, weak computer, you don't want to set it on high because the polygon count is going to be really high and it'll be a lot faster, but the computing process takes a whole lot more on this. So on the computer, you're going to have a scan button. I'm going to hit that. And now I'm going to grab this and I'm going to avoid my shadow, but there's already a process and a countdown. Very hard to see, but you want to kind of hold it at around 200 out. And this is the depth right there. So you kind of just want to move around. And because it's a 2D um, image, it's a lot easier than having a 3D, like because I don't have to move around as much. And I don't really care if it captures a little bit of the table. So I'm going to move to the top. See how I can grab that. I'm kind of just walking around. There's parts that I see in the image that are not capturing. And if I move it up and then I can actually slide it this way. Now, normally you don't want to be like touching it, but the way I have it on the on the table is a little bit harder. So I'm just kind of going back and forth. Problem is like my shadow, I really see the potential for just a hobbyist to have one of these. It's so much better than having to deal with chemicals and mold making. Okay, and I think we're ready. So we're gonna hit stop. And stop. And now it's going to be computing. So you can see my object here. This is the computing, uh, it's processing scan data from the Creality software. And you can move around and look at the model to see if you're happy with it. 
And it's missing a few things, but don't worry about it because, and this is a lot to do with the lighting in the office, but you can hit process and the scan, which is scan one, and this check should be on very badly. The user interface is terrible, but you hit process and then it's going to take more computing time and it's going to fill in all of these gaps. So at this point, you want to hit next and then it'll take you through more processing, which is diffuse, remove noise, repair, simplify, and then it'll add some texture mapping. Here I am, I'm in Blender and Blender is a free 3D program. It's really good for being free. It does require a little bit of a learning curve. So here we go. This is the first one that I scanned. This is the second that I scanned. There are little issues like the teeth. It doesn't have the teeth in there. So if I move around, you should be able to tell the scan. This is not a very successful scan, at least I don't think so. It's because mainly the clay itself is not very, uh, very good for this type of thing, but we should be able to clean this up. So I do think this is the more successful scan. The second one, the high poly one. If you come up here, click on your object, come up here to sculpt, you can do some very interesting things. For example, this smooth tool, I can just take it. I'm going to decrease my radius a bit and I'll just smooth out all of this. So that is the issue with these 3D scans is that they become robotic once you print them. And it's done. So guys, I have the first print. I'm actually printing a second copy. And this is the results. On the right, I scaled it down. This is the original Alien. This is the 3D printed version. I think it turned out fairly well. Let's look at it up close and see what it looks like. I made this a little bit thinner so it wouldn't use as much plastic. Something happened with the texture here. I've noticed this with the 3D prints and the 3D scans. Like it just creates this weird pattern. And what I think I might do is actually kind of clear it. One of the things I did with this is that I have the patterns from my raking tool. And one thing I like about sculpture is that you can see the artist's uh, sculpture tools in the sculpture. Here you cannot see that and that's why it keeps it a little bit more robotic. But all in all, it's a fairly good rendition. There's another version I was doing in Blender. I replaced the eyes with spheres and I made it that way because I wanted to see if I could make it a little bit more perfect. But I actually kind of like the whimsical nature of the 3D print. On the back, you see it's kind of just flat. It, it actually leaves a layer that you have to peel off because it sticks to the bed. And that's pretty much it. I think it looks pretty cool. You know, it's, um, does, it's not as detailed as a mold version, but I think if you're not gonna make a high production run and you're not gonna sell it for a lot of the money, you can make these fairly inexpensive and you know put them up on your Etsy and I'll put it up on my Etsy and that'll be a way of supporting artists so if you are into that you can uh, look at my links and uh, check out my Etsy well guys that's how you do a 3d scan I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you like the video make sure you hit thumbs up if you don't give it a thumbs down and make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching